speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indian Media. Rochester Indie TV, I'm Dawn, the Barefoot host, and today we're talking to Rebecca Newberry, who is the Special Projects Coordinator for Gay Alliance Genesee Valley, and thanks Rebecca, also a good friend of mine, and it's nice to be able to be here today and actually spend some time with you, even <laughs> if it's on the air, you know, I finally get to see Rebecca, so this is great, and uh, Rebecca, tell me about your work right now, what exactly the special, you know, it sounds kind of um, fancy, what it is this title? I love the word yeah. special. Um, special, we know that. But what do you do? <laughs> right now what I do at the Gay Alliance is I work on two programs. Uh, one is uh, approaching its second year called Campus Out. And the Campus Out program is right now on five college campuses and universities in the Monroe County area. And we're actually expanding into uh, Livingston County with uh, Geneseo. What we do is we work with the Gay Straight Alliances or the LGBT, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Associations, student associations on those campuses and we, you know, it's very student inclusive. Uh, students come together once a month to talk about the issues that are going on at their campus, uh, how to make their campus a safer environment for all students and how to really push administration, uh, whether that be through curriculum initiatives or uh, anti-discrimination mm -hmm. initiatives, to make their campus more inclusive and safe. And uh, we also offer programs throughout the year, uh, workshops, sessions, um, and a conference in the spring that focuses on skill set and advocacy skill building for students. And are most of these groups already established yes. and you're coming yes. in to help facilitate and make them stronger as you Yes, and it's, it's extremely student run. Um, you know, every, everything from how Campus Out, uh, what the framework of Campus Out is, uh, how representation works, to workshop topics, uh, facilitators, all of that's student decided. So um, the Gay Alliance just provides uh, a framework for that, but students really add their thoughts, their ideas, and their expertise to direct the program. And is this something now just more everyday and common to find the groups like this on campus? It's not hard to get it going and it's very uh, well attended? I think depending on the campus. Uh, some of the campuses, uh, the histories of the groups are really interesting. Uh, SUNY Brockport actually, they began, um, Seoul is the group at SUNY Brockport, and they began in the 90s uh, in response to the AIDS ep epidemic and um, to be a voice for gay equality on, the, on that campus. And uh, the history is just really interesting. There was a lot of um, backlash from students originally when Seoul formed. So they have a very well-documented history. But then if you're looking at a campus like Roberts Wes Wesleyan, you're not going to find a gay street alliance on that campus. Are they still experiencing backlash now? Uh, Seoul? Um, not or other groups, like these other new campus groups? That maybe um, not well recently. No, I haven't heard anything from the students. Um, RIT actually just opened their LGBT center for students last year. So uh, they're really moving forward in a great direction and it's really wonderful to see students be able to network with each other and share ideas because other students might want to do that on their campus but they don't know the framework to do that. So then, you know, they're networking with students who have done those things and sharing ideas and it's really exciting to I see. I mean, it seems almost um, like popular now to question your identity and even a lot of, you know, self-identified straight individuals are going to the drag shows mm -hmm. in greater numbers on the college campuses than it seems that the um, gay and lesbian and trans community coming out because it's so mainstream almost. Mm -hmm. is, is that accurate? Well, I think, I think again, depending on the environment, um, I, I really wouldn't say popular. <laughs> it's the popular thing. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, I think those things are good. I think that, you know, for instance, drag shows, I mean, it is a part of gay culture. 
And um, I think it's important, just like any other cultural event on campuses, um, that you know, the gay or the queer groups on, on those campuses have that right to, to promote their culture and to, to share that mm -hmm. with other students. Well, let's talk about the other um, special project you're involved mm -hmm. with uh, through the uh, Gay <laughs> Alliance, and that mm -hmm. is? Uh, I also work on a program, uh, it's our Runaway and Homeless Youth Project, and right now what we're doing is we're building relationships with local service providers, um, residential treatment programs, and uh, organizations that work with homeless runaway youth uh, populations in Monroe County. And the, I guess the spark to this was a few years ago the Les Gay and Lesbian National Task Force released a extremely in-depth um, report on incidences of, home, of homelessness among LGBT youth populations. And uh, it's, it's interesting because nationally it ranges between 40 to 60 percent of runaway and homeless youth also identify as being lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. And what do you make of such high numbers? Like, what's the reality? Well, uh, we're looking at, in a, and again, depending on the city and the resources, um, but not only do lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender youth um, not only are they at higher risk for uh, alcohol, uh, substance abuse, tobacco, um, unsafe sex practices, but also they're at a higher risk for not being able to access services um, based solely on the fact they identify as LGBT. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, uh, you know, bullying in schools are at higher percentages among this population. Um, not being able to find Friend, friendships and develop relationships, um, you know, being increased risk of disagreements with their family members, uh, all of these things put youth at a higher risk to run away. It seems if curriculum within the schools and education with parents were just really early on, mm -hmm. say, at birth, so you yeah. know you have a child, your child might be gay yeah. or bisexual, and that's okay, and this is what you would do. I mean, how, but seriously, how can we begin to do something a lot I, sooner? I think that's a great, a great point. Uh, there's been a, a numerous school districts across the country that have started addressing uh, diversity issues at elementary, at the ele elementary level. And it's interesting because one of the things we hear a lot from school districts is, well, you know, it's not appropriate. We can't talk about LGBT issues at the elementary level because it's not appropriate and people are going to get uncomfortable and there's going to be a community backlash, blah, 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 all this other mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, granted that's a concern, mm -hmm. but the issue is, um, you know, bullying is off the charts in mm -hmm. school. The use of the word faggot, the use of the word dyke, I mean, gets thrown around whether or not the child identifies as gay or lesbian or not. Mm -hmm. and, and it's affecting children and it's affecting their ability to perform well in school. It's affecting, you know, their relationships with their peers. So this stuff needs to be addressed, and it needs to be addressed at a young age. And we're going to talk more about it when we come back. Rochester Indie TV, stay tuned. Oh, hi. I'm Steve Heiss. I'm the producer and editor of the Indie Media Newsreel, which is the program you're watching right now. Or, well, I mean... Very, very important message, so listen very carefully. Not now, now, because now, now, I'm recording this, and then I have to edit it. And but, but I mean, for your now, right now, as you're watching this, it's now. Um, well, anyway, um, Newsreel is a monthly program that's been in production for about seven years. Every month, activist video producers from around the country, around the world, even send in video segments about events in their communities. Events where people are standing up for what they believe in and trying to make a difference in the world. However, we have a problem. Lately, for whatever reason, when I sit down toward the end of the month to work on putting together the next month's program, I look at the pile of submissions sent to me and, well, that pile's been pretty empty. For some reason, people just aren't sending very much in. And I'm not sure why, but I need contributions to make the show happen. I can't just make it out of thin air. I need other people's documentaries. Little documentaries. Two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, about things going on around them in their communities. So, if you're watching this and you like this program, maybe you can help. Maybe you make videos or know someone who does. Someone who's involved with a local struggle and wants to document that struggle. Or maybe someone who's already making 
short little documentaries and wants more opportunities to get the word out about what they're doing. There's more details about this project at newsreel.indymedia.org. Help spread the word. Thanks for your help and thanks for watching. Bye. Rebecca, we're back. Here we are. And this is uh, Rochester Indie TV, and we're talking to Rebecca Newberry, a special project coordinator with the uh, Gay Alliance of Genesee Valley. And let's get some terminology out there because, you know, it changes a little bit. You keep mm -hmm. saying gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. Um, there's a quite a mouthful, but there's also queer you hear a lot. And how do you define queer exactly? It, it's a really good point. Um, queer actually. Uh, began to be used in a, in a reclaimed sense of the word dating back to Queer Nation, one of the organizations that um, spawned up, you know, doing direct action and uh, queer mobilizing. And um, it's interesting because I present, I present to such a diverse group of people through the Gay Alliance and I do a lot of work with, um, you know, teachers, I do work in, you know, penitentiaries and education, mm -hmm. you know, in all sorts of different venues. and. Queer, it, um, for, for older folks, for folks that identify in the, in the LGBT community that are older, the word queer stimulates this really uncomfortable negative response because it, mm. it, it, it was a hate-directed word, mm. and it is a word that's used to insult and hurt um, members of the LGBT community. However, it's really been reclaimed uh, over the past 10 years or so by, by youth in a way that's an umbrella term to describe different orientations, different identities, in a way that's inclusive. So, you know, it seems like we, we joke about always adding more letters to this LGBT, AI, you know, <laughs> thing. And I think, you know, we, we're starting to use the word queer, at least younger folks are starting to use that word, is a way that's inclusive enough to include everyone and not have to spell everything out all mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. um, so Can a straight person use it if they have they're actually, a mindset honestly, that's queer? Honestly, <laughs> I do know straight people who, who identify as queer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that's a great, a great way, too, for allies to identify. And if, if they identify with the community, um, you know, I, I do know folks that do that. So I guess for the remainder of the show, I might just say for the queer community and mm -hmm. use the word queer if that's okay and without leaving anybody out. But um, right now in Rochester, um, what would you say some of the greatest obstacles that you, or things that you're working on facing the queer community here? Uh, we're working on numerous things. Uh, first, obviously, as you know, people people are aware of the Martinez decision, court decision for marriage equality, and now that New York State um, is obligated to recognize marriages uh, outside of the state. So, mm -hmm. if a couple were to get married in Canada and come here, they're entitled to the state benefits that uh, uh, heterosexual couples are are entitled to. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's also, on a policy level, the Gender Expression and Discrimination Act that has recently passed the Assembly, the State Assembly, which gives um, gender non-conforming individuals, whether that be transgender, uh, gender queer, or even straight identified people that don't fit into that, mm -hmm. you know, stereotypical male or female box. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives them rights, um, the same rights that everybody else is guaranteed mm -hmm. in housing, um, health care. Um, uh, in the workplace and currently right now it's it's totally legal for a trans person to be fired for their job for being trans um, mm. kicked out of their house not considered renting. discrimination it's not considered yes discrimination wow. legally so um, so that that is really exciting it passed the assembly um, recently and so now we have to wait for approval in the Senate which will be a little more difficult mm -hmm. uh, and then in addition on a policy level, there is an act um, currently up called the Dignity for All Students Act. And what that does is it will protect students in schools K through 12 against bullying. And it has um, contained in it a framework where students and teachers can actually seek, um, you know, accountability for, for bullying mm -hmm. in, in schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the um the gay marriage, you know, it's, it's a little bit frustrating at times because it just seems like something so basic. Like, mm -hmm. okay, just get over it. Like, let's just everyone be able to get married if that's what you want and get on with it. It doesn't seem like a huge radical demand. Right. And so how do you reconcile that, the importance of working on that, but so many other things that need to be challenged probably more strongly? Well, I guess, I guess I'm going to stop you real quick. Uh -huh. um, because we're trying, we're trying to, again, you know, let people see that it's a marriage equality issue. It's not necessarily a gay marriage issue. Mm. 
and uh, you mm -hmm. know marriage equality mm -hmm. being equal with every other mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And right now, gay people are second-class citizens. Mm -hmm. We do not have the same rights, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it is a human rights issue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So. You wrote an article on the Rochester Indie mm -hmm. Media site, and you were talking about a group called Bash Back. Mm -hmm. It's a national group, I believe, and uh, you were talking about it in relation to larger mobilizations and gay pride marches when this group comes out. You talk about this group and its intersection with these large events. Sure. Um, Bash Back, I kind of have an affinity in a lot of ways, I'll start here, with, um, with radical queer contingents and and organizations that may not completely identify with main, mainstream gay, uh, the mainstream gay uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And I think that Bash Back, again like Queer Nation, ACT UP, a lot of these organizations are important because uh, you know change happens on, on different levels and while we need initiatives and while we need policy change and while we need le legislative um, campaigns, I think we also need visibility um, mm -hmm. in our community on, on different levels, mm -hmm. and we need um, grassroots mo mobilizations, and we need critique of our own organizations mm -hmm. in our community. Mm -hmm. So um, when I learned about Bash Back, I, they're out of currently out of Chicago, mm -hmm. and they're a relatively new organization that is working uh, along with a national loose affiliated organization called Unconventional Action, mm -hmm. um, planning actions again the, against the um, Republican National and Democratic National Convention mm -hmm. in the fall. And we're going to talk more about it because we want to know why is it important for these mm -hmm. various groups with their political agendas to go out and um, make themselves visible at the Democratic National Conventions and the Republican National Convention and the kind of solidarity that happens and the local work kind of combined with the national work. So we're going to talk more about that and anything else you want to talk to in our last seven minutes, Rebecca. And you've been watching Rochester Indie TV. You can check us out online at rochesterindiemedia.org and we air on Channel 15 Mondays at, at 6.30 and Thursdays at 8.30. And every once in a while we're in the Greece suburbs too on public access and you can catch us online at Blip TV. Get involved, check out Indie Media, read our stories, write a story, come on out, Rochester Indie TV. See you in a bit. are made from rocks, delicious government rocks. We're back, Rochester Indie TV. We're talking to Rebecca Newberry with uh, Gay Alliance of Genesee Valley. And um, I want to ask about your work with uh, the transgender community and what kind of work you're doing specifically and some of the challenge that may be different than just with the gay or queer community, but for transgender um, folks. And then also our sensitivity, uh, while, you know, maybe there's an ambiguity to some people and maybe that's part of it is we're so used to having gender distinctions. You're a boy, you're a girl, and that's just how it is and how we approach people. So that's a two-part, if you can tackle that, Rebecca. Well, uh, definitely. Uh, well, at the Gay Alliance, uh, we have, um, we do have trans staff um, uh, in, in, our, in our organization, and we do work extremely closely with trans groups and trans rights groups in the area, both on a local and state level. Um, and right now, a huge push, as I mentioned before, um, legislatively, is gender. And it's extremely important for, um, for trans folks and people who might not identify mm -hmm. as trans, but maybe are just gender ambiguous a little mm -hmm. bit, and um, to, to obtain rights um, that everyone else has. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our big push there. Uh, and in, the, in addition to that, just to mm -hmm. touch on your second part of your mm -hmm. question, um, 
I was doing actually, I was doing a training last, maybe two or three weeks ago to a group of school teachers and the trans issue was a huge issue for them because I think, like you said, we grow up, um, people that aren't trans and, and aren't fo uh, really faced with that um, dynamic within their personal identity, don't mm -hmm. really think about mm -hmm. um, people that fall outside of the female male dichotomy. Mm -hmm. And it makes folks really uncomfortable to try to see gender and orientation on a, on a spectrum. And to a certain extent, bisexual people also, also deal with this, uh, mm -hmm. just not really falling on one end or the other end. You mm -hmm. know? So we as a society, I think, are really uncomfortable with people that we can't clearly label. And um, that, that uncomfortability turns to frustration, turns to anger, or turns to denial. So a lot of people are really left out of, mm -hmm. of um, you know, spaces to express their experiences, to express their voices, and to express, uh, you know, rights that they need. And how can we make people more sensitized? I've been to a lot of workshops mm -hmm. where we start the workshop and it might be a big group and everyone goes around and you also say your pronoun preference mm -hmm. and sometimes it's cumbersome and it's a little awkward, yeah. like, you know, because, you know, there's only maybe one person who doesn't take on, but still I mm -hmm. think it maybe creates that space and is Definitely. that... Definitely, and I, I wish that a lot of places had that, <laughs> mm -hmm. but they don't. Uh, and I think, I think the, the biggest thing I can just say is, you know, ask and, and you know, uh, approach folks and you know, how do you prefer to identify? Mm -hmm. You know, ask people um, and open up that, that mm -hmm. venue of dialogue because until, until that relationship is made, you're mm -hmm. never going to know. Mm -hmm. and, and also not to beat yourself up too much about it, you know, tr just to approach, approach like anything new, you know, learn information, read books, go to websites. That's the only way that you're going to feel more comfortable because the more you push away from it, mm -hmm. the more uncomfortable you're going to mm -hmm. be. And you worked on a conference last year and there's another one coming up this year called Beyond the Binary. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that and even that, what that expression means and what happened at that conference and what you're planning this year? Definitely. Uh, Beyond the Binary is kind of a side project of mine. Uh, it's not totally Gay Alliance organized. Um, but it's with a group of other folks in the, in the area that have come together and the, fir the first conference actually dealt with gender binaries and exploring the space in between gender binaries. And that could be, um, you know, d discussions and conversations about sexism, um, patriarchy, uh, male privilege, um, femininity, all these different things that, you know, we, we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis and what that means and what that space in between all of those mean. Mm -hmm. And coming up this fall, uh, the second year we're doing this, we're broadening that concept a little, little to expand on binaries in different venues of activism. So overlapping maybe AIDS activism with anti-racist organizing mm -hmm. or, you know, anti-war organizing mm -hmm. with LGBT issues mm -hmm. and what those spaces look like. Mm -hmm. So expanding on that and that vision. And that's going to be sometime in September, I believe. You can find that out on Rochester Indie Media mm -hmm. later, too. And let's just, with you know, our last couple minutes left here, talk about some of the successes, what you have seen over the years or the time, you know, even in your work or before, that a lot of these groups um, like ACT UP, Gay Liberation Front, Queer Nation, um, what accomplishments have been made? Well, there's been significant improvements on access to care for HIV AIDS patients um, and their families. Uh, just language alone has been changing. Uh, you know, back in the 80s, you wouldn't see the words B and T, bisexual, transgender, included in even gay organizations. And now we're seeing a acknowledgement and a value of those experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, Anti-hate crimes legislation is in, is in the works. You know, there's organizations like our Anti-Violence Project, which documents um, people who've, who have experienced hate crimes and harassment. And all those documentations you know, are used in a way that's empowering to our community and mm -hmm. brings light to that issue. Um, mm -hmm. There are you know, increased penalties for people that, that uh, act on hate crimes mm -hmm. and um, perpetuate hate crimes. Uh, changes in school curriculum to include diversity initiatives and inclusion. So uh, there's been so many things mm -hmm. uh, and I think that um, I'm excited to be part of this movement now and I'm relatively young so I'm excited to see uh, over the next couple of years um, more justice and more recognition of our families and not even not even just LGBT families but 
families in general, single parent families, um, people living with HIV, uh, caretakers, uh, intentional families, immigrant families, mm -hmm. all, these, all these different um, organizations and relationships be acknowledged and, and tell valued. us real quick uh, where are the safe places for queer youth or the queer community or family members that want to get information just where can well, they go you can always check out our website um, which is gaylions.org mm -hmm. we do have a youth program there that has drop in hours and different groups mm -hmm. um, there is also Center for Youth that um, is an inclusive place that children and youth can check out um, that also op offers street outreach and drop in hours uh, so definitely. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. And this has been Rochester Indies TV. And stay tuned for next time. Thanks.